Live from O'Rourke's Public House, welcome to the Mike Bray Radio Show. The Mike Bray Radio Show, presented by the experts at TireRack.com, and also brought to you by Vivid Seats, First Source Bank, St. Joseph Health System, West Bend Insurance, Nissan, South Bend Orthopedics, IBEW NECA, and Papa John's. Also sponsoring tonight's show, LaGrange Country Dodge. Four Winds, South Bend, Gulf Stream Coach, and Troyer Carpus. Now let's go live to O'Rourke's Public House for the Mike Bray Radio Show with your host, Jack Nolan. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Mike Bray Radio Show. It is show number nine, just one more left number next nine. week. Glad to have Rex back here on the panel, and you guys got here nice and early. You got parked and everything okay? I, I got in okay. I mean, I'm, I'm good. I mean, I walked out after the show last week, and, um, you know, I, now I'm thinking maybe they do really want to run me out of town. My car was towed from out back. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm getting the message. I'm here. Yeah. I'm feeling it. So I'm just hoping I go out there and the car's still there. You know, we'll find out. We checked on it right before the show. So it's, it's I good. I don't think they'll hook it again. You just I never don't know, think baby. They will hook it again. <laughs> well, it was your final Saturday, Monday turnaround of the season. That's always a challenge. Both teams ranked one at home in Virginia yeah. Tech, one on the road in Florida State. And you played really well in both, and I guess that's what makes it both frustrating and hopeful. The foundation is there, but the fact that you keep playing down to the wire and what is a bottom-line business, you need to get some wins and you couldn't do it. No, it's a good way of putting it. You know, frustrating yet hopeful. But, you know, against Virginia Tech, I thought our defense was good enough. Um, and we hung right in there. We couldn't generate much offense the last five minutes, which has been – a bit of an issue for us, you know, finishing offensively. Um, and then uh, in Tallahassee the other night, I, I thought we went for it and were playing fearlessly against a really good team. And uh, But again, just couldn't finish that thing, uh, you know, down the stretch. So um, we're playing a little faster, you know. I think that's helping us a little bit offensively. It's it, it's helping guys not to think too much and overanalyze, which I think we've had a little bit of that with our shooting woes and, and you know, I, I'm interested to see how it carries over to Sunday afternoon uh, at Louisville. Difference on Monday from Saturday. Saturday, they, they jump out 5-0. Yeah. It doesn't seem like a huge lead, but when you're having trouble scoring, yeah. you, were, you were fighting back from the right, from the beginning of the game. Monday night, you jump out, and, of course, your guest tonight, Mr. Harvey, scored the first seven points. But you took the lead three times in the first five minutes. You just were in a much better flow, and I think it just extended to the whole game. Yeah, there's no question, and I, I think that goes for any team, but certainly a team that's struggling like ours and is a little younger and wondering about confidence at times. If you can score early, everybody feels a little better and you feel you have a shot, and, and that, that – was the case in Tallahassee that helped us not being able to finish and coach and I talked about it on his TV show this morning the problem in Florida State in fact it's remarkable you're only down two with 40 seconds left on the Mooney dunk because that was the only field goal you got the last six minutes of the game what are you seeing as a guy who has been part of teams that not only finished a lot but you were the guy that was doing the finishing a lot what are you seeing about the reasons why this team is just having trouble scoring in the last three to five minutes of games? You know, that's kind of a difficult question. You know, I think we have so many talented players on our team offensively. You know, we exhibited that against Florida State in the first half, and I think we kind of just lost a little bit of that edge going into those final minutes, and I think that really comes down to experience. It's not nagging our guys or anything. It's just that they haven't really been in those situations where they've been up in, those, up in the early part of the games, and then they had to sustain it all the way to the end. But realistically, I think uh, right now in this part of the season, everyone's just learning right now. And obviously, we're going to keep fighting and keep doing everything we possibly can to win games. But realistically, we're looking towards just building ourselves as better players to moving on. Hard for young guys to have an edge. I mean, when you think about it, and we've talked about it, John Mooney wasn't real good on the foreign tour this year. He was still a guy who wasn't a leader in the past. He's getting an edge. Prentice Hub is letting his edge come to the forefront now. But it's hard for young teams to have an edge. Are you seeing it coming up to the level it needs to be for the rest of the year and especially for next season? Well, you know, the, the ultimate edge guy was this guy. You know, that, that's one of the losses is, is his edge and his toughness and, and, and intensity. Um, I am very pleased with how Prentice Hub is playing. I think he is playing 
really well, and he's almost setting a tone for us with us playing faster, getting it down the floor. TJ's always had an edge. He may not shoot it well, but he fights you every time. You know, he's always battling you. I think you're right. Johnny has learned that. And then after that, the rest of them are in training, you know, and, and they show signs of it. But as far as doing it at our level in the ACC, they, they're not quite there yet. And that's something we have to nurture the rest of the way and certainly in the offseason. You know, Coach and I again talked about this this morning. Prentice Hub has great shooting games, games when he struggles. And the three-point shooting is inconsistent, but I've noticed a similarity to you. You've made some huge three-point shots, mm -hmm. but they seem to come in the flow of the game. Now, I don't want to put anything in your head because you were really starting to shoot four for four against Duke. You had four for four again, I think, at UCLA from three. But it seems that when plays are designed for you, you're thinking about, I have to make this three. It doesn't go down. Mm -hmm. Prentice seems similar. If he gets, like the other night, a couple of aggressive drives early in the game, and then the three start going down. Mm -hmm. What is it about getting into the flow? Where do you need to be? so that the three-point shot is something that you're doing without thinking about it because it seems to be thinking about a three-point shot is like thinking about a two-foot putt. Mm -hmm. It's not going in. Mm -hmm. I think it just comes down to confidence, and I can say that for all of our guys, it, me as well, is that when you see the ball go in the hole, obviously early in the game, you get a lot more confidence moving forward. Like, okay, good, I got some points up on the board. Moving forward, you have a lot more confidence in that area. So, like, as you saw, like, when our players have their best games, it's usually when they get an early easy bucket, whether they get fouled, make a couple of free throws, or get a layup, and then all of a sudden their mentalities change, and they're like, okay, I can do this, I can score. And I think that's been one of the hurdles that we've been needing to overcome is that when we don't make our first one, two, three, or shots, uh, to get over that and understand that we are still capable of making buckets and then also being confident. And I, I, I think that's just the whole learning curve that our whole team's learning right now, and then it's going to progress into the next season. I have been impressed with your, your team's poise in terms of the guys in the striped shirts. And you notice the whistles more when you're not winning. <laughs> uh, and in all honesty, when a team is on a roll, the older teams, teams that are winning, teams that look bigger, a bigger guy who knocks over a slider guy is often going to get the benefit of the doubt because of the way it looks. That said, even the other night, there have been a lot of really physical games, and, and I bring up John Mooney. I mean, goodness gracious, the guy is leading the United States of America in double-doubles, and he's gotten knocked over so many times in the last two weeks without a whistle. Mm -hmm. Are you impressed with the way that they are ch trying to channel the frustration into good play as opposed to taking themselves out of the game? Yeah, I mean, we talk about that, and, and hopefully – you know, I guess I have my moments every now and then. And well, I got you're, the, you're I more got, frustrated right now than I have seen you in quite a while. And I, with the officiating? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. a little bit. But I'm, I'm hoping, you know, I, I don't, I tr you know, I try not to sp display it too much in front of our guys because I don't want them to go down that road. And our guys have been fabulous with it. They just keep playing. They have not used that as an excuse, and we certainly aren't. Um, but, you know, a lot of times when you're in a season like this, it's funny how, you, you don't get to benefit it out much. And Johnny's a good example of a guy, you know, he's as playing as well as anybody in the league. But, you know, when you're not one of those projected NSA tournament teams, it's funny how it, it can turn on you. Um, but I, I have been proud of our guys. And, and I got distracted a little bit at the end, maybe rightfully so. Uh, but for the most part, you know, you just you try and not be distracted by it so you – are not a bad example for your guys. Well, and I wasn't using this as a negative because there is still that lobbying. I don't know how many times I have seen a coach either have yep. an intense two-way discussion or just go off and suddenly that next whistle goes for your team. I mean, you're still in the state of Bob Knight, and I know it's been years, and you're coming up on 20 years next season as the head coach here. But I know when you first got here, Many basketball fans in this state judged how a coach coached during a game by how angry he got at the <laughs> officials. And if you didn't That's get angry point. at the officials, you weren't coaching. And I have seen you try to walk that line of defending your team. So I wasn't saying that you were oh, distracting right, right. them either. And yeah. you've had some intense yeah, conversation, yeah. like halftime Saturday. And I know, and, and I guess in this, it's. You're so respected by the officials. Sometimes you can't get the tee that might help. You got one earlier you didn't want this year, and that ended up burning you. But the one official said, Mike, walk away. Yeah, they look me walk off. Away. But they won't. They understand it, but I just don't under. You're not getting the benefit of the discussion Pro as you have in the past. Probably not. 
they're, they're probably not. And I think when you're a veteran coach, you kind of take it like a man because maybe you've been there before. And you make your point, but you can, you know, you don't, you can embarrass yourself too, you know, with being distracted and blaming and, and, um, and I've not, I've tried not to talk to officials too much throughout my career. I think overall it's helped because guys appreciate it, you know, not, um, when we played at, uh, the garden, the night we played Oklahoma, uh, one of the officials, actually Burt Jones, who's a veteran guy, and we've had him a couple times since before the game said, coach, I want you to know you really appreciate officiating your program because your guys don't get distracted by us or mistakes we made. And, and we appreciate your, your demeanor with us. And I said, Hey man, that's, you know, that's how, so that's who we've been. That's been our culture. Um, but I'd be lying if I didn't say, I, I think Johnny Moody has been banged a couple times on those dunks and it should be an N one. <laughs> right, that's right. You're a chair talker. I mean, you will talk to him without letting the public know. That yeah. You're yeah. Talking to yeah. Him. They've appreciated that. But I also think Rex, now we get back to, it's been maddening. You're not shooting the ball. And when the ball is not going in, you're not going to get as many calls because there's some frustration. I mean, have you, have you sensed that to a degree? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Obviously, it seems like in the flow of the game, the referees kind of go with the flow in the sense of where the team is hot. They almost want them to keep going. It's almost kind of like a popularity contest, it seems, some at times. But obviously, the referees are doing their best job possible, and they kind of get caught up in the game and everything. But going back to the point of Coach Bray kind of getting you know, frustrated or angry, I actually see that as a positive for our team because then it shows him showing fight and that kind of inspires our team as well. That it's like, oh, if coach is getting that way, then we should be that way as well. And I know that's one thing that I try to reiterate to our guys on the bench, definitely when they're over in their coaches' meeting, like right before he comes back in. And I'm always telling, like, look, it, coach is over here trying to work everything out for us, man. We got to do something back for him. And I'm glad that you brought that up because I've noticed that too. This is a younger team that needs to know you've got their back. Yeah, no question. And and um, and I think they know that. You know, I mean. Uh, because we have a lot of guys that are still developing and still searching and still wondering. And we have tried to find silver linings and positive things. And there were many on Monday night that you could come back to individually and collectively, you know, that you could build on a little. And, and so you, and then, then you're honest with, okay, by the way, now, if we don't keep them off the offensive boards, we're going to get beat again you know and you're very matter of fact you know we've always had really sharp guys here they're really smart um and and you know you can teach and show them and they they digest it well one of the big bright spots monday was your dc pipeline guys yeah. had a terrific night dj harvey prentice hub combined for 35 points harvey had 18 points two rebounds and assist the block and a steal and we'll go more into that when he's up here a little later hub 17 points. Each Harvey and Hub were one point off their career highs. He had a career high seven rebounds, three assists, and a steal. You had three double-digit scores. Mooney had 14. But you really need four. That's under, throughout your tenure here, yeah. the way this offense goes, you've almost always had four guys average in double figures. And that's probably been the missing piece this year. It really has. You know, we've not been able to get that consistent scoring depth night to night and we've talked about when tj and prentice are both scoring for us then we really have a chance of course the other night only one of them scored yeah, and then on, and then on saturday tj scored but prentice didn't so you know those two guys do set a tone i thought prentice and as you mentioned dj harvey i think the tempo that we're trying to pick up is helping overall but i thought it really showed with hub and harvey the other night they were playing downhill I kidded DJ in practice yesterday. I said, you've never asked for a sub. He was so tired because he was running so hard he needed a sub. And, you know, really what we're asking Hub to do physically is kind of amazing. He's playing 35 minutes. He's pushing the ball. You know, he's guarding a good – you know, he – for a young guy, I, could, I can't, oh, I can't no, ask I, much more out of him. He's coming off ACL surgery. Yeah. At this time last year, he came out to visit so he'd have – something to do being around his right. future teammates because he couldn't play. I mean, it's remarkable what he's doing coming off the knee surgery. We expect you to do the same thing, by the way. He, uh, he will. And, and, and then DJ's about yeah. a year out yeah. from his. You know, one of the things, we had a big meeting today. You know, we meet once a month on progress, and we talk academics to, to nutrition to strength training. And one of the things that I was really excited to hear, both Prentice and DJ Harvey coming off major procedures – 
even during the season and 100 practices and 28 games in, their strength numbers are improving, you know, which is really was was Tony Relinsky was really encouraging to hear that they are they're actually getting stronger, which means they're healing up from these major procedures and they're going to have a summer of basketball instead of rehab. You know, we touched on the finishing thing. And I think, again, like one field goal in the final yeah. six minutes on, on Monday night. But I think one of the reasons for that is because you don't have the four guys, at that point it's easier for the other team to crank it up and take the guys who were scoring that night out. And they did. Out. Yeah, they um, did. They did. They really, really got out on us and pressured us. And we, even though, God, we had some, you know, it's been the story. We've had, we had some great looks where you go, you probably got to make one or two of those to beat a team like Florida State on the road. And that's what's been frustrating. <clears throat> we, we've done that a lot where, you know, the, here you, you could point to the offensive possession where we move it and get a great look and bang it down to go up 11, you know, and uh, or, uh, you know, go up six with three minutes to go and send a message. But that that's, we, you know, Boston College, we did that a little bit. Georgia Tech, we did that a little bit. Purdue, we did a lot every time they came at us. Of course, we had him then. We They answered. But we just haven't been able to do that uh, in this league this year and consistently. Florida State has lost one home game this year by two to Duke. Do you think that – so that fumble. wasn't our table. You hate it when that happens. It wasn't – It's a turnover, wasn't but that's our right. point guard either. We don't like to be honest. That's a tough one. <laughs> Rex, you've built much of your career on defense – and one of the reasons why this team has been able to shoot this poorly and be in virtually every game is because of the defense. You think that's getting a little overshadowed that people aren't noticing? And what are you seeing now in your role as a de facto assistant coach mm -hmm. about the defensive effort of this team? Uh, I think it's because we're missing shots that we're actually playing harder defense. We're realizing that if we're not going to be able to make shots, that we're going to have to stop them from making shots. And I think our intensity level and our focus level has really picked up. And you really got to attribute that to the coaches in practice, making that a main point. You know, just, you know, specializing on boxing out, making sure we set, uh, keep them to one and dones. And we want to make sure that once we do that, that we can – we're a really great team when we get on the break. I think we're – that's why coach has been emphasizing us pushing the ball as much as we have been recently. But I think the defense of our team has just been spectac spectacular, honestly, because we are, we're losing games yeah. by, what, four to eight points or something around mm -hmm. that margin. And the other team's not scoring much more than us. So that's a really – that's a great thing for our defense right now. So certainly you would count on him as being one of the double-figure scorers next year. But the other thing we didn't mention is it's not the same four guys. It's usually from a pool of six or even seven yeah. guys. Monday night, this is your hope for the future. 43 of your 61 points were scored by first or second year yeah. players. So you're getting there. We're getting there. We're, that, that was, it was an encouraging night down there. And, and again, the tempo thing is helping us. And I, I'm really intrigued and hopeful that we can set that tempo again. He makes a great point. We, we really pass the ball well. well. I mean, we still – we don't turn the ball over, I think. Your assist to turnover, you've got two guys in the top six. I mean, and, and, you know, just think what our assist to turnover would be if we made some of those shots on ball reversal. It would be off the charts. So we, we share it. We know how to play. Transition, we're, we're good with it. We make good decisions. And so just playing quicker, like, we, you know, you were there yesterday. We played uh, – I felt we needed to play kind of a game since mm -hmm. we don't – play until Sunday so we played four or five minute periods with a 20 second yeah. shot clock now, it was fun to watch it's one heck of a workout it's a lot different than playing with a 30 second shot clock talking to Johnny and TJ and guys were it was a great workout but we're just trying to drill that pace into our guys for the rest of the season and I can report the ball was going in the basket for both <laughs> the white team and the blue team, but it's, I mean, you're the hadn't first to admit. Had not carry it, hadn't carried over Hasn't all carried the time, over, all but, the time, but, but you, you got to believe that it's going to. We need to pay some bills here. We have questions for both Coach and Rex coming up. The Mike Bray Radio Show, live from O'Rourke's Public House. There are countless not very smart things you can do in your car. Painting your body green in support of Notre Dame basketball while driving. Painting your friend's body. Pretty much any kind of body painting while driving. But with TireRack.com, it's easy to be smart about your tires. Use our test results and consumer reviews to find the best tire for your car. 
Use our comparison tools to choose the right tires for you. Then have them shipped and installed fast. TireRack.com, official tire experts of Notre Dame basketball. Join the gang at O'Rourke's Public House, located in Eddy Street Commons, directly across the street from the Notre Dame campus. With over 24 beers on draft and an extensive selection of menu items, they're sure you'll find something to your liking. Experience dining in one of the five different Irish-themed areas overlooking Notre Dame's beautiful campus. Whether you're catching up with an old friend, meeting, or enjoying dinner with your family, O'Rourke's is the place to be. Visit them online at O'Rourke'sPublicHouse.com. Cheers! Here's to the Irish from O'Rourke's, the official home of the Mike Gray Radio Show. Fighting Irish fans, don't miss your chance to experience the action live with tickets from Vivid Seats, the official ticket marketplace of the Fighting Irish. Visit vividseats.com backslash UND today to buy and sell tickets to any event. Home games, on the road, even sold out games, no problem. And every transaction is backed by a 100% buyer guarantee. Vivid Seats lets you see more and sit closer all season long. Support the Fighting Irish with tickets from the official ticket marketplace, Vivid Seats. Available now at vividseats.com backslash UND. Life doesn't come with a financial roadmap. It does come with a lot of bumps and red lights. Steering clear of those doesn't have to be difficult. With First Source Bank's online money management tools, you can see all your financial accounts, balances, and transactions in one place. So you can easily set monthly budgets to help manage expenses and debt. Get the green light to a successful financial future with First Source's money management tools. First Source Bank, where better is better. Member FDIC. At St. Joseph Health System, every hand held, every story told, every tear shed, smile shared, and spirit lifted stays in our hearts forever. We're blessed because every day we get to make a difference in people's lives. To learn more, visit sjmed.com. St. Joseph Health System, we are called to care for you. You are making a point, and then we're going to get to the questions. I think it's a great point as a captain, as a leader, about what some of the older guys need to do when you hit the four-minute mark of a game. Mm -hmm. Make it again so p folks here can hear. <laughs> oh, yeah. So basically I was just talking about, like, there's certain scenarios in games when uh, it's not necessarily the two-minute mark and it's a close game where you actually need to really sit down and play defense or get a stop or, you know, get a critical bucket. But it really comes down to people realizing the veteran leadership out there where there's eight, nine minutes left in the game and you have a five, six-point lead, and you realize you can really turn the game's momentum around by either getting a big defensive stop or a bucket on the other end. And I think that's one of our missing pieces that we've had this year. Mm -hmm. And I think people are starting to realize that. And I think our players have done such a great job just trying to learn from our assistant coaches and everyone in watching film and starting to realize that so that they can carry, on, carry that over into next year. But hopefully that we can figure that out in the next couple, our last three games of the season that we can really start to turn it over going into next season. Drew Lister's here from South Bend. Coach, can you give us some insight on why you sometimes go man-to-man -man in some games and zone in others? Is it your personnel, the other team's personnel, their style of play, or all of this? A little bit of everything. You know, uh, the other night we played a lot of zone, and it was really good to us. And, and we've been good. We've been good in both. We played mostly man-to-man -man against Virginia Tech, and they scored 67 and 30 at halftime, and that's probably about as good as it's going to get, you know, when uh, uh, we played. So it's, it's um, you know, you kind of ride what is going for you. And, uh, you know, our biggest, I think our biggest issue at times has been getting the first miss, whether we're playing man or playing zone. Can we chase down the first miss? Because when we do, back to Rex's point, that's when we can run. We always run out of zone better. And we were zone a lot the other night. We got out and we get going, but you got to get that first miss. And in this league, uh, to give credit to, there are, some, there are some athletes and some quick to the ball guys in this league. He's a quick to the ball guy. He's not on the court anymore. You know, he, he got a lot of those 10, 12 foot. And Prentice did that Monday. Prentice did a little more of that. So you're encouraged about that. And, um, but, uh, Man, we, we play a little bit of everything, and Louisville, you, you maybe start, you know, we, we started man against Virginia and then went zone almost the whole game and then came back to man, and, and so we, it's just a kind of a feel where we go in and out. And our guys have done a good job changing, changing up. 
Gary Rivers is here as always, except when there's a conflict with the women's game. That's okay. We give you dispensation. Right. For a, we're going to try to avoid those next year, although I'm looking into it. It's not going to be easy. No. He would like to know, what are your expectations for this team this summer? Well, I think the first step, and our, uh, my strength coach and I have talked a lot about it, is less running, more strength training. Mm -hmm. I think that's evident for anybody that's watched us. Um, we... We are young, and we look really young. You and know, you and get moved like you're really we young. Get, we get blown out of there sometimes, too. So, um, and it's all, it's, it's all a process. We get it. But uh, I think it's going it, to be a spring and summer of strength training. And, and, um, and I think it will be very interesting, you know, next October when our fans come to an open practice and see how the bodies have changed. Because I think guys will really make some – changes and some jumps physically. I know Nate Leshesky will because against Tech, I thought that was his best overall yeah. game. And boy, he stuck his chest in there. He wasn't afraid to get knocked around, but a couple of times they kind of pushed him out of the way like he was a twig. Yeah, 20 more pounds, they won't be able to do that. That was his best job of physically putting a chest on a big guy. Blackshear is maybe the best big guy in the yeah. league. Mm -hmm. And, and um, so I was happy to see that because he had been struggling in that department, mm -hmm. fouling, Really, you know, he put it, he was smart about it. So, you know, it, it's, uh, but it's, uh, it's a lot of strength training for, for our group. Just to go on to that, I remember watching that game. They didn't really have the best start, actually, to the game. And I remember Coach really got in his butt and was yelling in his face a little bit to kind of get him motivated. And I was curious watching kind of to see how Nate was going to react to it. And Nate just reacted phenomenally. I think he came down, had five points, had he a did. great defensive possession on Blackshear where I think he got a block on him mm -hmm. and got the defensive rebound right after Coach Bree actually got in his face. So after seeing that, I was like, that, that was really encouraging for me to see for this guy's maturity already growing in this season. And he had that key block at the end of the first half of the Tech game mm -hmm. that really yeah. prevented Tech from getting momentum. Shea Lister has a question for you, Rex. Mm -hmm. Why do you love fanny packs so much? <laughs> That's not really a basketball question, but I don't know. As you know, fanny packs, I'm from California. Maybe we like to try to be trendsetters, not necessarily always trendsetters. But it's kind of my own little style that I like to rock around with a little bit. And it's really useful, honestly. I could put a lot of stuff in there yeah. without making my pockets too bulky. That's right. And you always know where your stuff is. Always you don't know, know which stuff. pocket or do I have it because <laughs> I'm always losing stuff. <laughs> Daniel Paglia from Scranton, Pennsylvania is here. Coach, what did you learn from your time at Delaware and Duke? Did it prepare you for coaching in the ACC? Yeah, I first had to prepare me for the Big East when yep. I first came out there. But, no, I was, I was really fortunate. To, you know, the Delaware days were great, and we had some really good teams. As a matter of fact, Mike Pegues, one of the assistant coaches at Louisville, yeah. was, you know, You're the all-time leading scorer correct. at Delaware. I'm going to get with him uh, and two of my guards off my 1998 America East championship team. They're, they're going to be in town Saturday night. They're coming by the hotel. Uh, Keith Davis, Tyrone Perry, and Mike Pegues. Those guys made yeah. me look pretty good as a young coach. Um, but they got you ready. And, you know, the great thing about the Delaware job is, you know, I became a head coach and, you know, I made not – and, and I still make a lot of mistakes, don't get me wrong, but I'm, I made all those early mistakes, you know, and it wasn't on national TV yeah. and it wasn't on Big Monday and, and they let me learn how to coach. How often do you talk to Martin? You know what? We text a lot, and he's really having a very good year. They are making the progress they're supposed to make. They're 8-8 eight eight in the league. They actually play Northeastern tonight at home, which would be a big win for him. But he is really – he's moved the needle with the program, changed the culture, and they could win their conference tournament. It's a one-bid league. You know, they'll go in there as like the four seed, but you can win it and get a bid. They've got 16 wins right now. I'm really proud of them. Brandon Liss is here, as he always is, Coach. After the Virginia Tech game, Buzz Williams called you his hero and mentor. <laughs> what did that mean to you, and who were some of your mentors as you came up through the well, ranks? Buzz and I have learned to, to hit it off. Of course, we had unbelievable battles when he was at Marquette, and so we've known each other for a while. And, uh, you know, he kind of sits with me at league meetings and on the road, and I have the utmost respect for him, what he did at Marquette and what he's doing at Virginia Tech. And, um, he's a fun guy, uh, and, and he has got a heck of a program. And certainly, you know, Mike Krzyzewski and Morgan Wooten, uh, those were two guys that trained me and, 
I'm amazingly fortunate that, you know, those guys were my mentors. I mean, I've been really blessed with great mentorship. Mark Krasinski from Mishawaka, season ticket holder, has a question for you, Rex. With you and TJ doing such a great job with the fast break on the TV show, have you ever thought of doing a podcast with him? <laughs> uh, Actually, don't give these guys any oh idea. My gosh, I would <laughs> love to do a podcast. I would honestly have to be PG because we're at Notre Dame, but it would be super fun, honestly, because I think TJ and I have a lot of good talks outside of basketball. Yeah. Because we don't just always talk basketball. We, we're, we're friends on a, a personal level where we're talking about life. We're talking about friendship. We're talking about struggles that we're going through. And we try to have each other's back all the time. I know TJ, every time I'm looking, I, I see him down, whether I'm at practice or out, he always texts me, and I always text him back when I see the same. So we always have each other's back. So it would actually be really interesting to see us on a podcast, so whoever wants to be the producer. Well, Fighting Irish Media, we're looking for various podcasts maybe, maybe, right now. Maybe next year. We have Scars, we have Podward Notre Dame. So <laughs> we try I'll, that this I'll summer. float that. Could be, be a fun. summer, summer be project. Teresa Jameson's here. From South Bend, are there any summer trips on the horizon for the team this year or in the fall? Not this year. You can go once every four years. We went last year. So, you know, what we need to do is lock up Rolf's, the facility, which is a great laboratory for guys to get better, lock ourselves in there and do basketball, strength training, nutrition, and just have one of those great six-week summer sessions. The guys will be in class. Some very important summer on the home base. Jen Lister has another one for you, Rex. What are your thoughts on DJ shorts? Uh, you know, I, I like short shorts. You know, I think they're really comfy. You know, California, we always wear short shorts when we go to the beach. Sometimes <laughs> the shorts might ride up a little high. And, you know, and people always <laughs> say that. But, you know, I love you, DJ. You do you, brother. <laughs> He'll be up here in a second. Rosemary Dzinski's here from Mishawaka. Rex, who determines which players room together on the road? Uh, I think our, the players kind of are saying it a little bit because, we, like, obviously they want to – room us with people that are in our uh, our same class but realistically uh, if we have great chemistry with a certain person we're uh, the main person that does it is coach Swanigan so we and he's so great with us and he's so personal that we can go up to him and talk and be like hey we feel like we have a better fit based on our sleeping schedules stuff like that that we're able to kind of communicate with the teams and that's why I love this program so much is that they treat us like men they don't treat us like they're they don't treat us like we're subordinates. They treat us like equals. And so, like, that, that's one of the big things, actually. Like, as small as rooming with somebody is actually a really big deal to us. I don't know. Who you room with on the road is a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care what business you're in. <laughs> Bad road roommate is not a good thing. <laughs> yeah. It's true. Katie Lister's here from South Bend. She is the manager for her school's basketball team. Oh. But this is kind of like, who's your favorite child? Who is your favorite manager? Hmm. I, I would defer. I, yeah. Hey, our man, our managers are unbelievable. They take care of me. Awesome. They do. Oh, yeah. a, they do a great job, and uh, you know they've been playing hoops the night before the game against the other managers. I and think, you won at Florida State. I think State. they won in Tallahassee. Of course, you can also include administrators. Yeah, we kind of yeah, showed up with a pretty players. good team. <laughs> I, I, I heard we loaded Atkins, the deck. Atkins, Ayers, and even Liam. And Liam, because he's a walk-on, he can play Liam too. Liam played there. Yeah, yeah. he did a couple too. dunks too. Oh, interesting. So uh, if I'm Florida, I'm like, what? You know, it, it, we have had a long line of managers that are just so good and so attention to detail. And we've had a couple, Pat Rogers, uh, uh you know, Pat Holmes that have gotten into coaching. They've, mm -hmm. they've come, and I don't think they've ever thought they were going to be coaches. And they come, and they're around the program, and they're around the vibe, and they want to be teachers and coaches. And, uh, you know, John Cunningham is in the ACE program down in Texas, coaching and teaching. We've had many of them do that. It's kind of neat to follow them. Jerry Liss wants to know if you have any plans to sing and throw out the first pitch at Wrigley again. I'm going to take a year off this year. <laughs> I'm going to take a year off. You know, my, my, my – uh, it, it, we got to go to the NCAA tournament unless we make a run and get in. I mean, I'm, uh, I'm going to give it up and let somebody else do it. But it is an unbelievable experience. I don't think it's an every summer experience. <laughs> you know, now that I've been here 20 years, yeah. I'm a little bit of old news. But every now and then with family, you go over there and have a fun afternoon. And I love Wrigley. Don't worry about Digger. He, uh, he will be back. I think he does it every year. He does, anyway. it, he does. He does do it every year. Kira Gilligan from Philly, have you started preparing for the ACC tournament? No, yet? not yet. We still have, you know, three, home, three league games here. And, of course, it's going to be a quick turnaround because we will play Tuesday in Charlotte. I think that's the 12th or the 13th. Um, but we will play in Pittsburgh next Saturday at noon, get back here about 6 o'clock, um, repack, wake up, practice, prepare, and, and head to Charlotte Sunday night. 
Fans, experience the action live with tickets from Vivid Seats, the official ticket marketplace of the Fighting Irish. Visit vividseats.com backslash UND today to buy and sell your tickets. Vivid Seats helps you see more and sit closer all season long at vividseats.com backslash UND. It's the Mike Bray Radio Show presented by the experts at TireRack.com. Next up, DJ Harvey. We'll be right back. Go Irish! LaGrange Country Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram will sell all new vehicles at employee pricing plus the national ranking of the Irish. That's right. Pay only five bucks over the employee pricing and you can drive a new car off a lot. LaGrange Country Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram. 45 minutes east of South Bend at exit 121 on the toll road. Drive a little and save a lot. Check them out online at LaGrangeCountryDodge.com. That's LaGrangeCountryDodge.com. And go Irish! Troyer Carpets, your family-owned local flooring retailer, is the proud partner of Shaw Floors, the industry leader in flooring products for more than 40 years. Troyer Carpets offers exceptional carpets, hardwood, laminate, tile, stone, waterproof vinyl products, and more. Check them out at TroyerCarpets.com and call for a free estimate today. Don't forget to visit their state-of-the-art showroom and 10,000-square-foot warehouse in Goshen, filled with in-stock deals that you simply do not want to miss. Go Blue and Gold! Gulfstream Coach is looking for experienced people for the electrical and slide-outs departments and will interview candidates on-site immediately from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m., Monday through Friday. They offer steady production schedules at higher than industry pay rates. Gulfstream Coach is a family-owned business and offers amazing health insurance, attendance bonuses, and paid vacation time. Come see them today at 717 South Oakland Avenue in Napanee or visit gulfstreamcoach.com. drink with your co-workers drink wiser heading out with your buds to watch the big game at the neighborhood pub drink wiser gathering to celebrate someone's birthday drink wiser your friends from budweiser and united beverage in south bend encourage you to drink wiser and choose a designated driver first responsibility does have its rewards when you don't drink and drive this message is service of budweiser united beverage state farm insurance agent tim growl and 96.1 wsbt Hi, this is Evan Sharpley. And this is Sean Styers. Join us this Friday for the Leprechaun Lunch at Five Star Dive Bar in the newly renovated State Theater in downtown Elkhart. We'll be talking about all the latest sporting news, including our beloved Irish. There's also plenty of live entertainment like trivia, karaoke, dueling pianos, and live bands on Fridays and Saturdays. Plus, catch some laughs at the Five Star Comedy Club, Five Star Dive Bar. With Sean and Sharpley and the Leprechaun Lunch, Fridays from noon to one. Food, sports, music, and fun. On 961 WSBT, the sports leader. Welcome back to the Mike Bray Radio Show. Please welcome DJ Harvey at 18 points against Florida State on Monday night. And this is an anniversary that you will probably both cringe about and be happy about. One year ago today, you had your micro fracture knee surgery, and they say it takes a year to get all the way back. So it should be all uphill from here. <laughs> Were you thinking about that today? I didn't even know. No, yeah. I did not. Uh-uh. So how... People don't understand how severe that surgery is. Talk about how tough your road back has been because you weren't even cleared to play at all until mid-October. Yeah, I was nipping at the bud to get back. You know, Coach Bray was always telling me, yo, if you're not feeling good, don't push it. Um, and, you know, before the surgery even happened, they kept saying how serious it is. And, you know, when guys come back, they're always not the same. So going into surgery, I was like, okay, you know, all the odds are stacked against me. I'm going to make sure that I come back, you know, better than how I came in. So, you know, just kept pushing myself and just tried to beat the odds. At times, you've appeared to me frustrated. Cause before you got hurt, you have displayed an athletic ability that is rare in players. You can do things that even some NBA players can't do. And then you get hurt, and you can't do them anymore. And it seemed like the times on the floor you would try to do something, and you couldn't do it, and it just made you angry. Yeah, definitely the mental barrier after coming off injury like that. And, you know, we've taken tests after my surgery. I'm more athletic than when, like before the injury. So it's just a mental mental thing. Just have to go out there and do it with time. How have you tried to help him? And is he helping you at all right now? Because now you're going through something similar to what he went through. To be honest, I, I kind of just viewed it from afar, and I could see the way that he 
went into it with his injury and his rehab and everything you know it was like almost inspiring kind of same with Prentice hub it's just that they didn't think of an injury as a failure they saw it as an opportunity and the way that they went about it was very businesslike it was very in my mind i'm like i need to do the same thing and i think the reasons why Prentice and dj really came back as strong as they did is because they had that positive mindset that they were going to come back better than they were before and I think that's what's been pushing them, and that's how my mindset has been going throughout my rehab right now. You know, we often talk about the Notre Dame family, but this is kind of the Western chapter of the DeMatha family <laughs> with Coach Bolanis, Coach Bray, and now you're here. What did the Bob Whitmore day mean hmm. to you? Because I know when you signed to come to Notre Dame, Bob Whitmore was in attendance. Yeah, he was there. Yeah. yeah. It meant a lot. I, I didn't even recognize him when uh, he was at my signing, and then he was like, do you know who I am? I was like, no, sir, I'm Bob Whitmore, you know, who started this whole thing. And then, you know, hearing about his health, I'm just glad that, uh, you know, he was able to make it out for his night. And, you know, you know, just all those people that were there to support and, uh, you know, all those things that he started, just glad to be a part of. And, of course, you're used to being kind of a trailblazer as well. You and Adrian Dantley, the only true freshman to start a game at DeMatha. That's pretty impressive. Oh, yeah, I try, I try. Is that hard <laughs> to live up to, though? Absolutely. You know, Agent Danley, a Hall of Famer, and, you know, definitely. I heard the stories, you know, first game. Definitely didn't let me live that down. So, you know, got big shoes to fill. Talk about how he has gone through this rehab and the future that you see for him and what you think he needs to do to reach – the tremendous heights he's capable of reaching. Well, the exciting thing, as I mentioned earlier, is what Tony Relinsky, and he just said it again, is his explosiveness is better than before the surgery. You know, he and, you know, Prentice was his rehab partner, as Robbie is, is Rex's rehab partner. Um, but those guys, you know, they, they, didn't, they weren't able to work on their game. All they could do is work on their legs. Uh, he got himself in great shape. He's lean. I think he's going to be even leaner. You know, we're going to get him down even more. And he can really work on strength training and skill stuff this summer. So I'm, I'm really excited to see where he's going to be like August 1st, you know, where he gets a whole spring and summer of strength training, skill work, all of that stuff. But as you saw, we're about a year out now, and maybe it was almost prophetic. Monday night, I saw different gear. You know, and, and they were, he made some of the plays he made before athletically before the surgery. So I think and, and, and it's funny. So did Prentice, you know, yeah. almost, you know, so, I, you know, I'm, I'm looking and in, in down the stretch here. Maybe we're really getting into a rhythm with two guys that spent a lot of time just getting healthy. My favorite play from you Monday night, you make so many spectacular plays, but Thank people might have thought I was losing my mind. But I went nuts. Seven forty three left in the game. Your baseline mid-range jumper. Oh, yeah. Not spectacular, but I don't think anybody can stop you when you get 12 feet from the basket going at him and just go up for that little jump. Yeah, definitely when it came into crunch time, I had to go to you know, what I felt comfortable and what I felt like goes in 80, 90% of the time. So you just kind of go to your bread and butter. And I'd love you to take 10 of those a game because I think you'll end up with 18 points. I don't think you'll miss many of those. That's a great move for him, and he probably got fouled on the second one later in the game, but we'll deal with that another time. Hopefully you were here early. We've been talking about that. You think everything evens out. I honestly think that next year. We'll get it year, back. We'll get it back. Every team you play will lose their leading scorer to injury before you play them, and you will get every foul every throughout call, the course every call. of the I'll game because it. you certainly away. need that. What do you think you need to do? And, and we are – you know, you're not giving up on this year. I mean, the only reason you have conference tournaments is miracles can happen. Yeah. Uh, the toughest thing would be having to win all those games against that competition. But in terms of next year, what are you going to be working on? What do you think you need to do to help this team get back to where the bar has been raised during Coach Bray's era here? Uh, I feel like I have to play hard, you know, every every game, every practice, every time I touch the court, you know, work on being more consistent and you know, coming from a high school where I, you know, just show up and everything is just easy. And, you know, freshman year, you know, not having to be, you know, counted on as much and then missing a year. So kind of that maturity on the basketball court, missing out on that. So, you know, just playing hard every night and, you know, just working on being more consistent and probably more so uh, 
vocal, being a vocal leader. Tonight's Mike Ray Radio Show is brought to you by TireRack.com, revolutionizing tire buying since 1979. You know they've got their game plan down. Their team of experts help you find, deliver, and install using a playbook full of their very own test results and consumer ratings and reviews that make buying a new set of tires as easy as the two-foot layup. <laughs> TireRack.com, the way tire buying should be. When we come back, Rex Fluger will fire the fast break questions live at DJ Harvey. It's the, it's the Mike Bray Radio Show live from O'Rourke's Public House. Remember the day when your daughter took the car on a solo mission but forgot to open the garage door first? You found three of your golf clubs mysteriously bent? And that night, a plumbing problem made your basement into an indoor swimming pool. Well, it happens. But if you have a West Bend insurance policy covering the important things in your life, your worst day doesn't have to end up so bad after all. Because the worst brings out our best. West Bend. To find out more, go to thesilverlining.com. When the lane's packed on the court, you go to the open player. When the lane's packed on the highway, you go to ProPilot Assist. The 2019 Nissan Rogue. Now with available Nissan Intelligent Mobility Technologies like ProPilot Assist. that can start and stop in highway traffic all on its own. Nissan Rogue. For the win. Get to Nissan. Proud partner of the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. ProPilot Assist is an available feature and cannot prevent collisions. Always monitor traffic conditions. Keep both hands on the steering wheel. See owner's manual for safety information. There's no doubt education costs have become overwhelming and continue to spike. Unless you choose to earn while you learn as an apprentice for the electrical workers of Local 153. Instead of spending $20,000 a year, often leaving school with a debt, you'll earn an annual package worth over $70,000 while you earn your associate's degree and the skills to be an IBEW electrician. Contact the South Bend Electrical Apprentice Training Center at JATC153.com and compare. Ashley is an athlete who is always focused on scoring the next goal. But when unexpected injuries happen, Ashley knows where to go. SB Ortho Now Walk-In Clinic, an orthopedic care clinic with same-day walk-in care for breaks, sprains, and sports injuries. Located in South Bend Orthopedics Office at Douglas Road in 23 in South Bend. And open noon to 7, Monday through Thursday, and noon to 5 on Fridays. No appointment needed means Ashley can be seen right away. Learn more at sborthonow.com. If your superpower is making pizza disappear, then you've got to try Papa John's new Italian Hero Pizza. Featuring a creamy Italian sauce covered with epic portions of pepperoni, salami, Roma tomatoes, onions, banana peppers, and topped with four delicious cheeses. It's like an Italian Hero sandwich on a pizza. Get a large Italian Hero Pizza for just $10. Download the app or order at PapaJohns.com. Better ingredients, better pizza. Papa John's. Prices and participation may vary. Taxes tip and delivery fee extra. Welcome back to the Mike Bray Radio Show, presented by TireRack.com. I mean, for as long as I can remember, we've done a segment on the TV show called The Fast Break. Now, in the old days, last year and before, I would ask the questions. On the TV show, we decided to switch it up and have the players do it, and it's, it's been different and very amusing in a different <laughs> way and a lot longer. And so now that Rex is here, we have given Rex, as part of his co-hosting duties, mm -hmm the official duty of asking the fast break questions with Thank the you. ability to ad lib some specifically cool, to the guests. So we'll give you three minutes. Go ahead. Uh, oh, here boy. we go. You ready, DJ? Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. F favorite all-time movie? All-time movie. Uh, Space Jam. Favorite musical group or artist? Drake. Favorite teammate on the team? Uh, TJ. Wow. <laughs> Who's your role model? That's crazy. I'm right, <laughs> right here. Can he, he couldn't, no, no, I'm not he couldn't even feel the game right yeah, there. That was ridiculous. <laughs> you just said TJ so fast. Go ahead. Um, what was the question? Who is your role model? Oh, my, definitely my dad. One thing the public would be surprised to learn about you. I play the piano. Yeah, you do. Twitter or Instagram? Instagram. Favorite thing to do when relaxing? Uh, play Xbox. Favorite part of practice and worst part of practice? Uh, favorite part of practice, the live stuff, and then worst part, the warm-up, like the drills before that. Yeah, that uh, <laughs> part of your game you need to work on over the summer? Uh, more consistent three-point shot. City or place in the world you would like to visit? Uh, probably, like, Dubai. That's a great Ooh. spot. Wow. Which is better, a highlight film dunk, blocking the key shot, or grabbing a big rebound? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dunking. <laughs> He's acting yeah. like it wasn't even a question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, one thing you always hear from Coach Brain in practice. Uh-oh. A rebound. That's, that's why I was laughing because the rebound is. Yeah, you, uh, need, you need a rebound. Boy. Yeah. Player on the team most like you? Uh, most like me. Uh, honestly, yeah, you. Yeah, we're pretty good. Yeah. Oh, he got it back. <laughs> <laughs> Best nickname on the team and who has it? Uh, probably Mooney because you can do so many things with it, like J Moon, Money Moon. I like that. Yeah, Big Moon. Uh, best player to room with on the road? Uh, Prentice. Toughest Notre Dame player to guard? Toughest player to guard? Honestly, Jawan. <laughs> toughest player to score on? <laughs> you're not, you, you don't count, do you? <laughs> I do count. Oh, you do count? All right, right. Yeah. <laughs> Were you going to say Jawan? I was going to say Nick. Okay. Yeah. He fouls. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Best sleeper on the team. Best sleeper? Yes. Like, what do you mean? Jumper. Jumper. Can oh, jump dice. Bruce. oh, best jumper. Uh, Robbie. Yeah. Best dresser on the team? Oh, uh, me. Where's dresser on the team? Mooney. <laughs> <laughs> best comedian on the team? Uh, TJ Apprentice. Yeah. And beard growing competition. Who wins, you or Coach Bray? I'm clean today. Ooh. Ooh. We're both clean I, I, today. Yeah, we're clean today. I but he can grow a beard. That's I can't grow a beard. Yeah. Is that okay? I only got this. That's all I got. <laughs> all right. Well done. Yeah. The fast break is done. We are not. Another break, and we'll be back. The Mike Bray Radio Show, live from O'Rourke's Public House. After hours drink with your coworkers, drink wiser. Heading out with your buds to watch the big game at the neighborhood pub, drink wiser. Gathering to celebrate someone's birthday? Drink wiser. Your friends from Budweiser and United Beverage in South Bend encourage you to drink wiser and choose a designated driver first. Responsibility does have its rewards when you don't drink and drive. This message is service of Budweiser, United Beverage, State Farm Insurance Agent Tim Growl, and 96.1 WSBT. Gulfstream Coach is looking for experienced people for the electrical and slide-outs departments and will interview candidates on-site immediately from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m., Monday through Friday. They offer steady production schedules at higher than industry pay rates. Gulfstream Coach is a family-owned business and offers amazing health insurance, attendance bonuses, and paid vacation time. Come see them today at 717 South Oakland Avenue in Napanee or visit gulfstreamcoach.com. Escape to Four Winds Casino South Bend. Featuring delectable dining such as award-winning Copper Rock Steakhouse and Kankakee Grill, where you can enjoy comfort foods with a modern twist. With daily food and drink specials, entertainment on weekends, 1,600 games, and a new poker room, you'll find just what you're looking for on your entertainment escape. Four Winds Casino South Bend. Dining, gaming, and fun. Visit fourwindscasino.com to learn more. Go Irish! LaGrange Country Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram will sell all new vehicles at employee pricing plus the national ranking of the Irish. That's right. Pay only five bucks over the employee pricing and you can drive a new car off a lot. LaGrange Country Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram. 45 minutes east of South Bend at exit 121 on the toll road. Drive a little and save a lot. Check them out online at LaGrangeCountryDodge.com. That's LaGrangeCountryDodge.com. And go Irish! Some knowledge belongs to us and us alone. The way our girlfriends walk, talk, touch their hair. Details that only a sister can know about her girls. Or what about our other girls? The ones we carry with us every day. Our bond with our sister girls gives life. But knowing your breasts can save it. Go to knowyourgirls.org for the facts you need on breast health. Brought to you by Susan G. Coleman and the Ad Council. Right, you mentioned that coach always says rebound. And at the beginning of the year when I asked you, what's your biggest challenge? A couple of years ago, he looked at me and goes, how long have you been here? It's <laughs> rebounding. Well, how about this? John Mooney is about to become the third Notre Dame player in four years to lead the ACC in rebounding. Bonzi and Zach August were the last two. So apparently for a team that struggles to rebound, you've got some guys who can rebound pretty well. We just need more than one guy. Yeah. And, you know, uh, Zach's year, Bonzi's year, yeah. and, you know, DJ certainly helps us in, in that department. And, uh, um, you know, so, you know, of course, the way Johnny's, Johnny's rebounding the ball at it at an unbelievably high level and playing really well. And he's a neat story because, as I said, Johnny was just okay in the Bahamas. He wasn't anything to write home about. And uh, we scrimmaged Cincinnati – Back in uh, late October, 
he wasn't that good. Mm -hmm. You know, we got on the bus and we had things we had to get better at. And I'm trying to figure out who our front line is. And then all of a sudden, so it's a, it's neat. And, you know, I just think, you know, DJ can make a jump like that. And we still have time this year. But as he gets, you know, he can make those kind of jumps. And Prentice can make those kind of jumps. Obviously, I think Rex was in the midst of one of those jumps, you know, and playing the best basketball of his career when he went down. But we can, we can get back to that in October when he's healthy. Now, folks, anybody who follows Notre Dame knows about Father Ted Hesper. There is a documentary that has just been completed. It's going to come to a theater in South Bend. It's going to be released nationally. Eventually, it's going to be in TV, although to support the uh, documentary producers, they'd love you to go see it in the theater. But these guys got to see it last night. I've seen it as well. It is terrific. I knew a lot about Father Ted. This brings it to another level. So I'm going to ask each one. I'm going to start with you, DJ. What did you think of that documentary? Uh, I thought it was, you know, big, you know, especially with, you know, all the things I've heard about Father Hesburgh. I never got a chance to meet him, but I've always heard great things. And then, you know, finally watching that documentary and seeing all the lives and people who's like that he's influenced that are like major part of history. It's just uh, eye opening. Rex. Yeah. You know, it's just amazing that. The, a person like that really was kind of like the the trademark of Notre Dame, kind of built us up into who we were, and he did it on his own terms, which were all morals. And I thought it was just so amazing how he was had such a strong self integrity, even when it came from the Vatican when he was the Vatican was telling him not to do something with his with the school. He said, "No, that doesn't sound right. I think this is better because it's going to open up a wider range of acceptance for our school, and everyone's going to see that we're a loving school in all natures, not just religiously." And I thought that was just such an amazing aspect as a person. If you get a chance to see it, see it. I interviewed him a number of times. I once got to spend 30 minutes with him in his office. Used to go smoke cigars with him. I would take two cigars up and we'd smoke in his office. Did that for about five springs in a row. Unbelievable. I think the thing that was so powerful about the documentary that I learned quickly when I got here 18 years ago, but our players, I don't know if they knew it, the, how instrumental he was to the civil rights legislation how he brought factions together, actually at Land Lakes, mm -hmm. to get this over the hump is really just riveting and unbelievable. And, and uh, I'm proud to say that I got to spend a little time well, with him. It, it wouldn't have happened without him. That's no. what the documentary makes clear, which might be his largest legacy. No question. And a very complicated legacy. We'll be back to wrap things up on the Mike Bray Radio Show right after this. There are countless not very smart things you can do in your car. Painting your body green in support of Notre Dame basketball while driving. Painting your friend's body, pretty much any kind of body painting, while driving. But with TireRack.com, it's easy to be smart about your tires. Use our test results and consumer reviews to find the best tire for your car. Use our comparison tools to choose the right tires for you. Then have them shipped and installed fast. TireRack.com, official tire experts of Notre Dame basketball. Join the gang at O'Rourke's Public House, located in Eddy Street Commons, directly across the street from the Notre Dame campus. With over 24 beers on draft and an extensive selection of menu items, they're sure you'll find something to your liking. Experience dining in one of the five different Irish-themed areas overlooking Notre Dame's beautiful campus. Whether you're catching up with an old friend, meeting or enjoying dinner with your family, O'Rourke's is the place to be. Visit them online at O'Rourke'sPublicHouse.com. Cheers to the Irish from O'Rourke's, the official home of the Mike Bray Radio Show. This isn't just any Wi-Fi. It's the best in-home Wi-Fi experience to stream the most free shows on any device. It's how Xfinity makes life simple, easy, awesome. Xfinity delivers fast speeds and the best in-home Wi-Fi experience. Perfect for streaming your favorites. Access the most free shows and movies and even your DVR recordings on any device with the Xfinity Stream app. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit an Xfinity store today. Restrictions apply. Fighting Irish fans, don't miss your chance to experience the action live with tickets from Vivid Seats, the official ticket marketplace of the Fighting Irish. Visit vividseats.com backslash UND today to buy and sell tickets to any event. Home games, on the road, even sold out games, no problem. And every transaction is backed by a 100% buyer guarantee. Vivid Seats lets you see more and sit closer all season long. Support the Fighting Irish with tickets from the official ticket marketplace, Vivid Seats. Available now at vividseats.com backslash UND.
There's no doubt education costs have become overwhelming and continue to spike. Unless you choose to earn while you learn as an apprentice for the electrical workers of Local 153. Instead of spending $20,000 a year, often leaving school with a debt, you'll earn an annual package worth over $70,000 while you earn your associate's degree and the skills to be an IBEW electrician. Contact the South Bend Electrical Apprentice Training Center at JATC153.com and compare. All right, back on the Mike Bray Radio right. Show. Another big challenge going down to Louisville, a season that has been ridiculously competitive since 2006. The two teams have played 18 times in conference play with a differential of two points. Notre Dame has scored 1,350 points. Louisville scored 1,348 points, although Louisville does hold a 10-8 advantage. It's always a great game. It's going to be a challenge because they're struggling a bit. Yeah, you know, and it's been overtime a mm-hmm. bunch too, and, and you're right. I mean, they've, they've got out of the gate 7-1, and one, and February has been hard on them, and they're, you know, they're searching a little bit, and, and, and we are too. But they've still got some men, and it's an unbelievable atmosphere. But I want us to play like we did Monday. I want us to play like we did in Charlottesville. I want us to play like we did in Chapel Hill. But finish. I know your mom and dad will be there. What do you think the keys are? Uh, I feel like, you know, the Yum Center is probably a very hard place to play, you know. So probably just keeping our composure like we do at all big, big, uh, big arenas. And, you know, playing together, playing hard, and competing for 40 minutes. And since the start of conference play between the two teams, Notre Dame's actually won at Louisville twice. Louisville's only won up here once. So you've been part of some of these games. What do you think the keys are, Rex? Keys of the game are obviously controlling tempo against a team that likes to pressure, uh, making sure that we uh, stop them in transition, and obviously putting the ball in the bucket. All right, it's 1.30 on CBS on Sunday. If you're out and about, a certain crazy guy will be calling the game on these radio stations. So <laughs> there it is. <laughs> guys, thank you very Thanks, much. Guys. DJ Rex, great job. Great job, Mike, great great job as always. You, We've got a guard in your car. It's not towed. We will be back last show with John Mooney and Rex next Thursday. Hope you will be here then. Until then, thanks so much for watching online and listening, and go Irish. The Mike Bray Radio Show, presented by the experts at TireRack.com, was brought to you by Vivid Seats.